Recording started. All right, I'm off and recording. Uh, as I said, hopefully I don't have to like run out there real quick. I got a little sick kid that's uh, watching Baby Shark, so I'm hoping that uh, entertains him enough. Was we're we're going for those of you guys that just came in. Okay, uh, first thing I wanted to do, I wanted to go over your course with you real quick because um, I've had a lot of students that say, "Hey, I've I come to class, which is great. I'm glad you're coming to class." but they haven't done any of the quizzes inside the course. So I'm, first thing I'm going to do, let me share my desktop with you real quick. All right. Um, can you give me a green check mark real quick if you can see my, uh, my screen? Very good. Okay, you guys are all with me, at least somewhat. All right, so as you log into your OLS, make sure you click on Geography, okay? Um, every day at the very front of the page, I have this announcement board right here. Okay, this announcement board, I post the, the lesson. Um, so if you've missed the lesson today, it's all going to be recorded here. Right? So I have Lesson 5, Lesson 4, Lesson 3, Lesson 2, all those ones from the very beginning, okay? So if you have not done the quizzes yet, you can always go back and um, do those. Right here is where I want to kind of go into. So two things. One, if you click on plan, um, that's going to take over what is due each day. Now this new course through K-12 that they kind of put in, it doesn't work very well with um, showing up on your planner of what's due and what's overdue. But you can see what's due and what's overdue right here. So as you can see today, lesson five is due. So that means lesson five quiz is going to be due. Lesson six quiz is due on the 13th. 18th is lesson seven. 20th is lesson eight and so on. Okay. Uh, yeah, so today we're going over lesson six. So if you need to catch up on lesson five, that was on Wednesday. And you can go back to the message board and be able to uh, see lesson five right here. Okay. In order to take the quizzes, what you need to do Oh, you're fine if you're late. That's no problem. What you do is you come up to the top here. We click on content. And then the content is going to bring us over um, to our courses. Over here on the left-hand side, we have a unit one. And if you click on lesson one, okay, that's going to show what you need to go through. So basically, you go through these things right here and take the quiz here. Okay. Lesson two is going to be right here. You go through what you need to learn, okay, and you go over lesson two right here, okay, and so on until you, um, you've done all the quizzes, okay. So that's how you complete the quizzes and get points. So if you have a, like a, if you go into your grade book over here and you have a zero on lesson one, lesson two, lesson three quiz, you need to go through and do that, okay. All right, uh, let me stop sharing real quick. Any questions on that so far of how to do the quizzes? Because um, it just seems like a lot of people maybe have, have not been able to get that so far. Okay, I'm hearing crickets, or at least on the, the chat over here. So um, if you do if you do need something, I can always set up something where we can go over the things on you, okay, or with you. All right, so today we're going to be going over the last part of North America, okay? Um, and so we're going to go over human impact on the environment and then also uh, immigration into uh, North America. Okay, so these are all the, the objectives that they kind of have us want to go over on here. We're not going to be get, going through all of those. Some of those are on your OLS, okay? So I don't go over every single thing, but we'll go over a little bit. Okay, so first starting off, human impact um, on the environment. Okay, we know that's one of the themes of geography, and we do a lot of things. Like, for example, can anybody tell me this first picture where I have my hand right there? What is that, um, that thing right there that's like going around in circles? Anybody tell me what that is? A windmill. All right. So what do windmills do? 
Okay, yep, wind turbine. Very good. So windmill, wind turbine. And what do they do? Creates energy. Awesome. Okay, so that's one way that we use the environment or we create energy uh, through windmills, there's solar panels, there's uh, as water's rushing down, you have water turbines, um, particularly in um, like dams and stuff, they can create energy there. Okay, so that's one way we do it. Another way we impact the environment is we build homes on the environment, right? And some people, uh, we get them in different areas, right? Like we may have built a city on a fault line. Okay, so if an earthquake comes and it goes right there, it's not really the earthquake's fault, but it's kind of our fault for developing it right on or living right on a, a fault line, okay? And then there's also things about human, like if you think about the fires in California, um, you know, some of those are man-made, some are uh, na by nature, but they affect us and the environment affects us and we affect the environment, okay? And so we just got to be cautious of those things as we're going through. So some of the things you want to think about, especially in the United States, one of the things we've built quite a bit is roads, highways. You see them everywhere. So I thought this map over to the bottom right of the screen here that I'm kind of pointing to is kind of an interesting map. It's the map of all the highway systems in the United States. As you can kind of see, it almost looks like blood vessels like in your, in your arm, you know, if you were to see that in your body. It's like the circ circulatory system. Um, but where are most of the highways? What area of the United States? Where are most of the highways? East, yep, the East Coast, okay. And that's for a good reason because if you look over to the left over here, this one talks about the population of cities with larger than 15,000 people, okay? You can see right here, the East Coast, and actually on all of the coast, you have more um, areas that people live. And people live next, next to the coast more because there's it's easier to get food, it's easier to get water, and that's just kind of where everybody's kind of, the temperature or climate is a lot, is not as seasonal as it like is in Utah because you can get really really cold in Utah and really really hot in Utah but as you can see around the call uh, California um, Oregon Washington there's a lot of people that live there and then of course on the East Coast there's a lot of people and then around the Great Lakes oh somebody has a question how do you know about amount of people um, isn't a result of highways well the reason we build highways is for people to travel, right? And the more highways you are, the more people live in those areas. Does that make sense? Because we wouldn't want to build a bunch, bunch of highways like in Wyoming when there's not a lot of people that live in Wyoming. So ho hopefully that makes makes sense there. All right, so this is just an A or B. So the green check mark is going to be true. The red X is going to be false. Okay, uh, central to geography is the belief that there is no pattern, regularity, or reason to the location of physical and human phenomena on the Earth's surface. Is that true or false? Okay, um, so basically what it's saying, right? Okay, so we got a couple people there saying. I'll let you guys answer and then we'll we'll go over it. Okay, awesome. That's creeping up. Let's have everybody answer real quick. Okay, I'm going to give you 3 more seconds to answer. 5 4 3 2 1. All right. So the correct answer is false, right? Okay. So there's not a huge pattern. Um or reason for location for uh human phenomenons to happen, okay? 
So very good there. You guys are, are spot on, most of you. There, there's only a couple that may have not got that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about other uh, impacts. This is a very interesting map. Uh, the map, if you can see here, the, the green stars are manufacturing or trading. Okay, so that means they build something. The squares are, the purple squares are ranches or grazing, so raising cattle for food. <laughs> the blue triangle is for crops, so like corn, those kind of things. Uh, the circle, the orange circle, is forest. So where we can gain um, like wood, get all that kind of stuff. And then uh, the pink just line is no widespread use, which meaning you're a lot of like desert, that kind of stuff. And as you can see, there's certain areas, right, where they have a lot of crops. Okay, they, they call this the um, the bread basket of the United States, right, in this area that I'm kind of circling with the hand there. And that's because it has a lot of fertile soil where you can grow things. As you can see, a lot of the other areas where you have the prairie lands in Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, some in Texas, that's where they have a lot of um, ranches and they grow cattle so we can eat them. Uh, also, if you look at the manufacturing, there's not a lot of manufacturing anymore in the United States, okay? Um, there's some, but not a lot. All of that is usually gone over to like China or Mexico or outside the United States. The other one is forest products, and that's usually on the coast or the Great Lakes where you will find uh, those areas. And then you can see where the deserty areas are or um, swamp lands because those areas you can't really, there's not a lot of use for those. But every other area has some type of use in it that we can kind of use for um, the environment. Okay, let me change your uh, pulling tool to A, B, C, or D real quick. Okay, the, qu the question here is, what is the unintended consequence consequence of urban growth? Okay, so urban growth means a lot of growth in the city. Okay, because urban means city. So what, could it be a cities serve to further separate the haves from the have-nots? B cities isolate certain groups of people from adequate resources. C cities are unable to provide for the needs of all, or C, cities create their own microclimate and produce large amounts of solid waste, uh, photochemical smog, and sewage. Okay, so I want you to put what you think it is there. Okay. Okay, B and C, same identical. Uh, yeah, they're, they're similar, right? So probably not one of those, right? Well, we'll see. We'll see what it is in a second. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry for my cough, you guys. I'm trying to get over that sickness as well. All right. So we got a lot of you. Uh, yeah, I'm just coughing out loud. All right. So some other people. So maybe you've changed your mind. Okay. The correct answer is D. That's right. Okay. So if you change your answer to D, that's fantastic. So basically, cities, they create their own, basically, area. Big cities do. And they they have large amounts of waste. So there's, where do we put all of, like, the garbage that we have? All of that kind of stuff. You think of sewage. Um, so there's a lot that needs to go into be able to maintain that. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. I probably need some hot beverage to, to soothe my throat there. You guys are awesome. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, here's the last one that we're going to kind of talk about is immigration. Okay. So immigration is big into 
North America. It's been the, a subject of a lot of political debate uh, as of recently as well. Um, no matter what you think about it, uh, there's just some some terms that I think you probably would need to know and be familiar with. So the first one is uh, immigrant. Okay, immigrant immigrant is a person who leaves one country to settle permanently in another after being uh, granted permission by that government. Okay, so not all immigration is bad, and I and I would say that it's good to have that influence of others in here, but there's two terms that are um, the same and they are illegal immigrant or undocumented immigrant okay um, so an illegal immigrant is somebody that comes over to like for example the United States without permission okay and they're actually called um, an alien okay uh, because they are not from the United States and that so we have on our exit ticket the secret word as you can see at the bottom right so for those that want to do good on their exit ticket they have it down here um, so just know that that is somebody that has entered in illegally uh, without having documentation okay all right okay so perfect timing because my son is now coming in and I'll lead you guys to your exit ticket real quick um, I'll have you guys I'll bring my son up here so he can say hi to you can you say hi <laughs> so uh, I sent that exit ticket over I will open up the slides for you guys um, oh they're saying hi yeah I can uh, email that link over too so all right well I'm gonna stop recording real quick I'll stick around for any questions and everything and I'll get him um, situated too recording